Hi everyone, it's Miss Rossi. Today we are going to create a self-portrait. What you'll be needing today is your white BU paper from your art folder. You can take the label off because we won't be needing that. You're also going to need a pencil, an eraser, something to trace your drawing with. I have a Sharpie, but you can use any kind of marker or pen and something to color in your picture. I have some crayons here that I'm going to use to add color, but you can use any other materials you have at home. If you wanna use colored pencils or markers, you can do that. Now today we are working with Mrs. Spar from the Media Center, and this week we're going to get to hear the story by Peter H. Reynolds called Be You. So to go along with that, we are going to draw a self-portrait that shows us and shows how we are unique. So today we're going to draw a picture of ourself that shows who we are and what makes us special. So as we are drawing today, we want our picture to look like us so we can add certain details like our hair, our eye color, our skin color, even accessories like glasses or any other little details you'd like to add. To start drawing our self-portrait, we are going to draw a nice big U shape at the center of our page. So I'm just coming down and back up towards the top. Now this is going to be the bottom half of our face. So we have our chin at the bottom and then those two lines going up towards the top of our head. And the next thing I am going to do is add a neck and some shoulders. Our self-portrait today is going to show us from the shoulders up. So we're going to draw our neck, which is going to be two straight lines going down. And then our shoulders, which are just going to curve towards the side of our paper. Once you have that drawn, you can decide what kind of clothing you're going to be wearing in your portrait. So maybe you want your self-portrait to show your favorite outfit or your favorite shirt. You can start by deciding what kind of neckline your shirt has. So maybe I have a round neckline, so I'm just doing like a smile curve to connect both sides. I'm going to make that same shape over again to give my shirt a little round collar, and then I can add whatever kind of design I would like. Sometimes when I'm drawing my portraits, I like to add two short little straight lines down at the bottom to separate where my arms are from my body. And then I can add any other decorations or details I would like to my shirt. Today I was wearing a black and white striped shirt with a banana on it. So I think I'm going to draw some stripes by just doing some horizontal lines, lines going from left to right. And then I can draw the little banana that was sewn on my shirt. It was an Andy Warhol shirt. He is an artist who created all different prints of things like the Campbell soup can and bananas that got really famous. I also wear a necklace almost every day, so I'm going to draw that on my picture too. And I'm going to make it a circle and I'm gonna put an A in it for art. Now that my shirt is done, I'm going to move up and I am going to draw on my face for my portrait. Now we want our portrait to look like us. We want to include two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. And then you can include any other details to make your portrait look more like you. I'm going to start by drawing my ears on the side of my head. So I'm making two big C shapes that are connecting to the side of my head. Now that I have my ears on my portrait, my eyes are going to go in this top section and my nose is going to go down in the middle. I'm going to start by drawing my eyes and I'm going to do a big curved frown line and then another curved smile line to make almost like a football shape for our eye. I'm going to do that same thing on this side now it is okay if they do not look perfectly the same. One might be bigger than the other, that is all right. Nobody's eyes are perfectly the same, so it's okay if as you're drawing them, they look a little different. I'm going to do two more curves inside my eyes to draw my eyeball. And I am going to draw a circle right in the center for my pupil. So we have our eyeball, which is the white part of our eye. We have the iris, which is the colored part of our eye. And then we have the pupil, which is the black part of our eye. Once you have that drawn, you can add any other little details. I like to add some eyelashes. 
I'm going to add some eyebrows up at the top by just doing like a rectangle shape that is curvy. And then I can draw my nose. For my nose, I'm going to start in between both eyes, come down with a straight line, and curve around. And now I have all this great big space at the bottom to draw my facial expression. You can decide what kind of emotion you want your portrait to be showing. I want mine to have a huge smile. So I'm going to draw a nice big happy face with some curvy lines and some cheeks. I'm going to add some lips by just doing some more curvy lines going around the smile that I drew. And I can do another smile-like curve to add some teeth. And I can even add a tongue on the inside if I have enough space. If you're missing any teeth, you might want to draw the teeth that you have that are missing and add those to your self-portrait too. Now that my face is all done, I'm going to work on the rest of my head and my hair. The first thing you want to think about before drawing in your hair is what your hairline looks like. So when you're looking in the mirror, what do you see where your hair is meeting your head? Is it more of a curved shape that comes down? I have a picture on canvas of all different self-portrait ideas that show different faces and different hairstyles to try and guide you to pick something that looks most like you. I am also posting an extra video that is showing a speed round of me drawing a bunch of different kinds of portraits to help you draw your own portrait so it looks like you. So maybe if you have different hair than me or any other little details, you can watch that video to get some more ideas and more help to draw your portrait. So you can look at those pictures and see if those hairstyles match your hair, or you can try your best to draw your own. Sometimes I think it's easiest if we do a nice big curve going across the top to give us the rest of our head. Now we don't want a flat line going across the top because we do have nice big round heads to make room for our brains in there. So do a nice big mountain-like curve up at the top for the rest of your head. And from here I'm going to start to draw my hair. Now I have bangs that come down across my forehead. So my hair is actually going to come down from the top of my head, curve around, and then I'm going to do almost like a zigzag line going across. To draw my hair. Once I get to the other side, I'm going to bring it back up and connect it in the middle. I can erase that line that I started with when I was drawing the top of my head. So now just that hairline that I just drew will be the only one that exists. I can also erase those little parts of my eyebrow that I can see through my hair as well. Because my hair is not see-through, so it would be covering up those parts. Now I do have long hair and it is mostly wavy, so I'm going to do a big wavy line coming down. I can do a couple wavy lines to show that there is more hair. I can have a wavy line coming down and going around my ear and down to my shoulder. You can decide if you want your hair coming over the top of your shirt, if you have long hair, or if you just want it going behind your back. It is up to you. Now, if you want it to go down across the front of your shirt, you're just going to draw it right on top and then erase the parts of your shirt that you can see through your hair. And if you want your hair to go behind your back, you're just gonna stop that line once you hit your shoulder. I'm going to add some extra wavy lines inside my hair for some more texture so it doesn't just look flat and smooth. And that is going to do it for my sketch. If you have any extra space in the background, that is a great area for you to add extra little details about yourself that make you unique. So maybe you can draw some of your favorite things in the background of your picture. Like if you play any sports or if you like certain books or video games, maybe even your favorite food. I don't have a lot of space left around my edge, so I think I'm just going to do some little blobs that I can turn into blobs of paint later on. Maybe I'll draw a little paintbrush here. But you can just fill in the background with all different things that you like. 
I like art so I can fill in those tiny gaps with some paint and a paintbrush. Now that all of that is finished, I'm going to grab my Sharpie and I'm going to trace over all of my pencil lines. We just want to trace our picture so it's easier for us to see before we start to color. I'm going to go nice and slow over the top of all of my pencil lines with my marker. And once I am done with that, I am going to grab my eraser and I'm just going to erase any of those pencil lines that I can still see. Now that I finished tracing my portrait and I went in with my eraser and I erased all of those pencil lines that I can still see, it is time to add color. So with my crayons, the first thing I am going to do is pick out my eye color. I want to pick out an eye color that matches me. I have green eyes, so I'm going to pick a green crayon that I think is going to match the best. Now if you want to test out your color on the back and see if you like it, that is a great technique so you don't make a mistake. I'm going to carefully fill in the iris, which is the colored part of our eye, with my green crayon. As I'm coloring in my portrait, I want to do my absolute best work, going nice and slowly to make my drawing super neat. I'm not scribbling. I'm coloring slowly back and forth to fill in that space and staying inside the lines as best as I can. I am going to draw another little circle inside my eyeball with my marker and color it in, leaving that one little circle that I just drew white as a little highlight. I'm going to do the same thing on there. So I drew a little circle and filled in the rest. And that is the pupil. That is the black part of our eye. And there we go. The next thing I am going to do is I'm going to pick a skin color that is going to match me the best. So I'm going to look for a crayon that I think is going to match my skin tone the best and use that to fill in my ears, my face, and my neck. And just like when I was coloring in my eyes, I'm coloring back and forth nice and slowly to fill in the entire space. Even when I'm filling in a larger area, like coloring in my face, I am still coloring in back and forth in one direction, staying inside the lines as best as I can, and filling up that entire space. We spent a lot of time drawing our portraits, so we want to color nice and slowly so we don't make any mistakes, and so our picture looks nice and neat. I am making sure that I am going around my mouth and around my eyes. I can go right over the top of my nose, and I'm also going to go around my eyebrows. was filled in nicely. Now I do have rosy cheeks, so I'm going to grab a pink crayon and just color in my cheeks so they are pink. If you have any beauty marks or you have freckles on your face, you can always add those into your picture too. Again, we want it to look like us. We are making self-portraits. And all of those little details that make you special and unique are what's exciting and you want to add those to your picture. And the next thing I am going to do is pick a color that matches my hair. So I have brown hair. So with my brown crayon, I'm going to fill in my eyebrows and my hair nice and carefully. Once I am done coloring in my hair, I'm going to pick a color for my lips, my mouth, and my tongue, and then I can also pick whatever colors I would like to fill in my shirt. Once you're done coloring in your self-portrait, you can also color in the background. 
So I added those blobs of paint in the background and that paintbrush so I can color those in however I would like. Again, making sure I'm coloring nice and neatly and staying inside the lines as best as I can. You can also pick your favorite color to fill in the empty space in the background. So once we're done, everything should be colored in. There's not going to be any white space left and you're going to have a beautiful, unique self-portrait that looks just like you. So I'm going to go in and finish coloring in my portrait with my crayons and then I will be all done. And that is my self-portrait all finished. Once you're done with your picture, you can upload a photo or video of it on my Canvas page. I can't wait to see the beautiful and unique self-portraits you guys have created. Try your best, have fun, and get creative, and I'll see you soon. Bye!